An iconic voice. You've heard her more times than you've seen her. And her unique, saucy sound waves live rent-free in many, many of millennials' heads. Let's begin. Um, could we not? So I'm back with my Icons Under the Radar series where I remind y'all about the celebrities, musicians, or actors that made a huge impact and have since gone somewhat overlooked for their accomplishments. These individuals I feel are iconic because their influence is being seen every day. Today I'm reminding y'all about the voice actress Cree Summer. Born in the summer of 69, Cree was raised in Canada, primarily Toronto, and began her acting career in the mid 80s. Let's see, I started voice acting when I was 11 years old. My father, Don Franks, was the voice of Sabretooth from the X-Men. He also was the very first person to ever voice Boba Fett and her unique voice would get her a lot of voice acting roles in animated features like the Care Bears movie, Inspector Gadget, and these Star Wars cartoons about Ewoks and droids that I didn't know existed. Asha had red fur. It's the rarest shade of all for an Ewok. Most of her on-screen acting was actually done on the Cosby Show spinoff, A Different World, where she was a regular cast member from its second season all the way till the end of the series in 1993. And she was perfect for that role as the free-spirited college student. I'm very articulate. Speak fluent messenger. Ready? Trust me. I would not like this job. Well, how much does it pay? $12 an hour. I love it! As good as Summer was on screen, it seemed that her true calling in acting was with animated characters as she took on voiceover roles even during her time on Different World. She got back into voice acting hard at the start of the 90s with memorable characters like Elmer Fudd's parody opposite, Elmira. on Tiny Toon Adventures and Susie Carmichael from The Rugrats. In fact, between her start in acting in the mid-2000s, Pre Summer had voiced over 100 characters, all spanning over TV shows, video games, movies, anything that needed a little spice in their voiceovers. Her voice really stands out, so I bet it was one of the most sought-after, marketable English voices out there, and I'm sure it still is. But I really wanted to show in this video what she's been up to lately in live action. Most recently, I've seen Cree in the flesh on screen on FX's Better Things, a great show. Do you want a Xanax? Yes, I do. How many? Three. She plays the friend of the lead lady, Pamela Adlon, another real life voice actress. Bobby from King of the Hill and uh, Spinelli from Recess and Lucky from 101 Dalmatians and Moose from Pepper Ann and the lady from this thing and the boy and the girl and the, I don't even remember. Who on the show plays a voice actress. Cree was on two episodes of Queen Sugar. She was on some movie called A Cold Hard Truth. Now, as we go back to the 90s, she had cameos in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Living Single. But there were actually these interesting legal dramas in the 90s that never got past the first season where she was actually a regular cast member of. In 1994, NBC aired this show called Sweet Justice and Cree played a lawyer who was a single mother. It also starred Cicely Tyson. The show was basically about civil rights around minorities and women and it took place in New Orleans. Sweet Justice only got 22 episodes, which was a lot more than this other courthouse drama from CBS called Courthouse. Now, Courthouse only aired 8 out of 10 episodes and premiered in 1995. Inspired by NYPD Blue and the O.J. Simpson case, Courthouse was supposed to be about a tough female judge and the other people that worked in the courthouse, including Robin Givens and Jennifer Lewis, who played a gay judge. But maybe in Mama, time... Mama, this is not some phase I'm going through. I left Howard because I'm gay. I'm still the same person, Mama. Danny is good for me. Now, Cree Summer was to play Jennifer Lewis's girlfriend slash housekeeper. They were supposed to be the first black lesbian characters on TV. But it seems that the world wasn't ready for that yet in the mid 90s, so they had to water that down. Also, the show was supposed to have a bunch of other scandals and romances in it as well. And it didn't really know what type of drama it wanted to be. So CBS pulled the plug on it pretty quick. 
it's great to see that Cree Summer is still willing to be in something blackety black today, like she did in the 90s. She's a fantastic representation for women of color on screen, whether it's through her voice or her actual presence. So around the same time she got her acting career started, she started singing. She did background vocals for Jasmine Guy's LP in 1990 while they were on A Different World. And in 1993, Cree, a big Frank Zappa fan, the experimental blues musician who actually died that year, released an album with her alternative funk rock band, Subject to Change. They couldn't have a wide release due to the loud political messages, but were a popular act at concerts. In 1999, she came out with a solo album called Street Fairy, which featured her friend Lenny Kravitz. For a while, Cree toured as Kravitz's opening act, but her label ended up dropping her like a newborn giraffe. Now, I would assume that Cree and Lisa Bonet were actually really good friends, given a connection to Lenny, the fact that Cree was quite literally Lisa's replacement on a different world, and the fact that Cree directed a music video to one of her songs that starred Lisa's daughter, Zoe. Even though the music label business clearly did not want Cree to grow as an artist, it was probably for the best, as her number one bread and butter talent seems to be with the voice acting. She's been able to use her singing talents many times though. Talks about you when it's sleep, there's nothing I can do to keep from crying. When it calls your name, Jolene, 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 Jolene. Let's count the sheep. One, two, three, four. Shush, shush, snow. Now here's some voices he did over the last few years that I found out on accident. So remember that show from the 2000s, Xiaolin's Showdown? Well, it followed up in 2013 as Xiaolin Chronicles until 2015. Kree had voiced a character on there named Wu Yu. Crush them. I retreat my beard! She did a voiceover for that cartoon segment in the Emmy nominated Atlanta episode BAN. You sitting on my back, man? Die! Sir, be quiet. Yo, you sitting on his back? He was trying to steal your cereal, right? I mean, it's this cereal. He can have it. She voiced this new Powerpuff Girl character in the reboot a few years back. Now let's find out who this nasty boogaloo really is. Ha -ha! My cranial. Say what? Fame 19th century chemist Louis Pasteur! Tom and Jerry started a reboot in 2014, and Cree has been playing a character on there. And more recently, Cree has been voicing animated Catwoman and Queen of the Amazons in DC Superhero Gals. She's in Kid Cosmic, pretty interesting show. It's made by the man behind Powerpuff Girls and Dexter's Lab, the Muppet Babies reboot. And she brought Susie Carmichael back to us in the Rugrats reboot. That SpongeBob spinoff starring Patrick Starr, she plays somebody named Bunny Starr. And she's on that baby Disney Channel cartoon about the little vampire. There's stuff in post-production that she's been credited for that hasn't even come out yet. The woman stays busy. Now, I could say that her voice lives rent-free in millennials' heads because it's so unique and we've heard it many times, but this is also the case with her homegirl, Tara Strong. Both of them actually grew up in Toronto and have done an absurd amount of voiceover work. I'm a big fan of the voice actors like them, and I tend to follow them on Twitter and wherever else. And Cree is actually pretty active on the Bluebird app. She'll retweet stuff from her fans and the fellow actors, clips from a different world, World, spread the word on some important issues and such. Somebody could at Cree this video and she might actually see it. But back to a different world. You can tell she's really proud of her work on that show along with the other cast members as that show would not be the Emmy award winning show it was without them. Now recently the DW cast reunited and talked about those Hillman days like regular folks. Cree lately has been rocking a Canadian park ranger look, which looks great on her by the way. She's always had that cool, close to nature, mystical, unproblematic vibe about her. And it extends through her million dollar voice. 
perhaps the hardest working black voice actress in the entire industry. She has definitely inspired more people of color to find work with their voice and has definitely proven to be forever iconic. So if you enjoy nostalgic observations and fascinating facts that you didn't know you didn't know, feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll be back soon, but not too soon.